Why isn't Ty Lue the coach here? Uh, listen, I think Ty Lue is a very proud man. He thought he deserved five years. Well, he deserved that commitment. Look, if the Lakers only offered him three, yeah. they're basically saying to him, we want you here just for LeBron. Yeah. We do not believe in you as a Laker coach post LeBron. We don't believe in you as the guy who can bridge post LeBron to the next era with whatever championship quality we build. We don't we need to we need to wait and see on that. We know what you can do with LeBron. We need to wait and see what you can but do Rich, without him. Already... And I don't blame him for yeah. basically saying pound sand, but then I can also see Palinka if he is in the the realm that Magic says that he is, mm. which he, he views things in terms of leverage or not. He might be a leverage junkie. Trust me, I've come across a ton of those in my era of the business of negotiating contracts in the on air portion of my life. I mean, the, he's where, where else are you going to find five years? That's Ty? what the I Lakers' mean, so. standpoint was. You're you're not even being talked to, and he actually is not. He he's not in the in the conversation for. A job right now. That being said, as you mentioned, he was already going to be perceived as LeBron's guy. So at least give me a four or five year deal where you're not aligning my contract for LeBron's nice. guy. Two years left or three years left. That's your your contract. The issue was Ty Lue was the perfect coach for this team. I mean, he's someone that LeBron likes and respects and has a track record with. But here's what I don't get. The reason the Magic and Rob dynamic did not work, you put two people together who've never worked together, have no loyalty. Now you've done that with the coaching staff. You brought in Jason Kidd, a man who wanted the job, very publicly wanted that job, and you forced him upon Frank Vogel, who I actually think is a good coach and has a chance for success. But he's walking in, and his successor is right next to him. It made no sense. It doesn't make much sense. Let's hit the couple things that don't make any sense one by one then uh, and just – Parse it out. Arash Markazi of the Los Angeles Times here on the Rich Eisen Show. So they made a decision, or Palinka made a decision, that got the check mark from Jeannie Buss, one would assume, of, of prioritizing leverage over what's best for the LeBron Lakers. Yeah. By saying to Tyler, where, where, where are you getting five years from? You don't have any leverage. Yeah. Where his leverage is like, well, I'm right for the right, I'm the right guy for the right job right now, and LeBron wants me. Mm-hmm. And that wasn't viewed as more important than having the leverage of giving him a three-year contract, trying to squeeze two fewer years out of him. I, if I'm LeBron, I'm sitting there going, what the hell is that all about? Exactly. And by the way, he wasn't only LeBron's guy. Phil Jackson said that's the right guy for the job. Magic Johnson, if you care what he says, felt that that was the right guy for the job. And So, <laughs> so again, then why did he not get hired then? Because they don't believe that LeBron – does Palenka deep down think that, that, that it's a power struggle between him and LeBron? That, or, 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 or they just did not love Ty Lue as much as LeBron did and Phil Jackson and Magic Frank, Johnson. But they love Frank yeah. Vogel more? But here's what I, I mean, don't that, get is the, that you would lose this man because of one or two more years. This is a $4 billion franchise. I mean, like, who cares if it's one or two more years? Uh, but they, I think they, they were still shocked that Ty Lue walked away from the deal because – they are saying, where are you getting this offer from? And I think he was just proud. And by the way, you go down the list of guys. Luke Walton preferred Sacramento. Monty Williams preferred Phoenix. Ty Lue preferred his couch. I mean, that, that's the state of the franchise right now, that you would prefer Sacramento, you would prefer Phoenix, and you would prefer your couch. I mean, that's where the Lakers are right now. And then, so then the other thing that doesn't make sense that you pointed out is Vogel having Jason Kidd on the bench where they, I guess they split it. They split the, they gave one guy the head coaching role and the other guy is the, okay, this is for you, LeBron role. I that's mean, the problem here. I mean, you, you're, 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 Putting him together with the man that LeBron has a relationship with. They were teammates on Team USA. They won gold together. They're friends. If LeBron has a problem or, you know, he wants to talk something out, he's probably going to go to Jason Kidd first. And Jason Kidd already has a track record of trying to kind of sabotage people or try to backstab people to get his way. Maybe that's why Rob Polinka likes him. I'm not sure. But why they were insistent upon putting him with Frank Vogel. If you like Jason Kidd so much, hire Jason Kidd. In fact, that, that, dyna that dynamic may have had a chance. Jason Kidd, head coach Frank Vogel, as his lead 
you know, number two lieutenant. Jason Kidd's not going to be a lieutenant. Jason Kidd wants to be the captain of the team. For more of The Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV for free on BR Live or download The Rich Eisen Show app.